Mike, great to talk with you today. Um, we've got lots of interest now in the G20 and Australia's hosting the G20 in 2014. But why is the G20 important? Well, the G20, it provides the forum that brings together the leaders from the advanced and the emerging markets. And we're in a world now, we're in a multipolar world, as many people say, where no longer one country or group of countries can dominate. We have now emerging markets, developing countries contributing over 50% of GDP. We need a forum that brings the leaders of emerging markets and the advanced economies together. The G20 was established to do that. The G20 is what we need to be effective to be able to do it. A lot of people talk about a G0 world. If we want to avoid a G0 world, we have to have an effective G20. Hmm. And you've just launched a new paper where you talk about relaunching the G20. Why is it you say it? What, what's the problem with the G20? Well, the G20, it's had a promising start, particularly the leaders process, in the sense that it helped avert the world going into a deeper recession. It provided a combined fiscal stimulus, it provided resources to the international financial institutions, it helped restore confidence, it helped launch better financial regulation. But since then, and it's the process of the G20, it's built up a degree of institutional procedural baggage. It's the way the, the agendas have developed. Each chair takes its priorities, puts it on the agenda, then the next chair inherits those, it adds to them, and we end up with a very wide-ranging and to some degree not related agenda. So it's starting to lose its way and starting to lose what is the most relevant, most important aspect of this. It's the ability of the leaders to come together and focus and solve some very significant global economic issues. Now, in the sense of the relaunching it, with my paper is based on looking at the experience of the G20 process over the last few years and identifying what's worked, what hasn't. We identify nine key lessons and we think that drawing those on those lessons is the opportunity to try and revitalise it, rejuvenate it, relaunch it, have it more effective, more focused. So for Australia being the G20 chair in 2014, any particular advice for Australia or what's in it for Australia? Australia, this is the opportunity. Australia really can make its mark on the world scene. It can make its mark by the way it approaches its chairing of the G20, its selection of the agenda topics, the way it actually conducts the procedures to try and introduce a more effective and more focused G20. Preparation is going to be the, one of the most important things to do this. What we're suggesting is that we have in effect a two-track G20. One where the leaders just focus on some very key issues ones where they can make a real difference and the rest of the valuable work that goes on the G20 continues between officials and with ministers. But in, ever, in order to make the leaders' processes as effective as possible, Australia should be trying to focus on where, what are those ones that it can make a difference, putting in the hard yards beforehand, starting the preparation and also signalling that the way that the G20 will be conducted in 2014 will be different. It will be a break, what I call a circuit breaker from what went on in the past. But it's going to take a lot of hard work, it's going to take a lot of preparation, and I think this is something Australia should be starting to do now. Mike, thanks for chatting with me. Thank you.